Hi, everybody. Welcome for this new Jenkins Infrastructure Meeting. And today we have quite a few topics, and we also have Victor who joined to do um, a small demo. But first, let's look at a few announcements that we have. The first thing is we just noticed issues with the Windows package for the latest weekly release to the 294. For some reason, we can't um, start the container that package Windows. So that really is, is a bit delayed, but otherwise packages are available for the other distribution as Debian, Red Hat, and Suze. The second thing that I want to announce is we now have access to a discourse account. Um, that service is available on community.jenkins.io. At the moment, we don't want to open it uh, for everybody, so it's still in the beta um, mode. We are looking for people who can help us to configure it, so we really we would like to, to use that that service to help um, and organize questions around Jenkins. So the first focus will be about the Jenkins user community, and then we'll um, open it to a broader um, group of people. So if you're interested to help, just drop me a message with your Gmail account and, uh, and you'll have an invite. And finally, the third um, major issue that I want to share, um, we've been a little bit behind with this one. So we noticed last week that a Puppet certificate expired um, a few months ago. And so while we fixed the Puppet Master and few Puppet agents, we now have to, to go back on every, on every machine to be sure that Puppet is in sync. Um, we'll have a little bit more, we'll have more time in the coming weeks to fix that. So let's start with the first topic. So since we have Victor who joined us today to, to, do, to present um, how we can help with the open telemetry plugin or on Jenkins instances, I'm going to switch this topic at um, the first one. So based on discussion we, has had, we had with, the, uh, with Victor and other people at Elastic, um, so Victor has been working on the open telemetry plugin and so ways to visualize information. So in this case, it's not about monitoring Jenkins to know if Jenkins is working or not, but it's more how we can collect information and visualize information, vi visualize those information to detect um, wrong behaviors. Um, may maybe um, Victor, you want to share a little bit here? Sure, I'm gonna share the screen first. Yeah, uh, let me share that. Let me stop sharing. So while you prepare the sharing, um, our objective is to is to 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 use CI to Jenkins that I you um, in for that CI as a way to test this. Um, yeah, can you share? Awesome. Here we are. Uh, right. The very first thing I would like to introduce is the plugin. It's already available in the Yankee CI or uh, has been released a few versions already. We are in the 0.x branch at the moment, so it's not yet 1.0 for the, yeah, basically uh, we need to standardize all the naming convention to be sure like they can be used uh, one change in the future for such we need to engage with different communities in open telemetry spectrum and also in the uh, uh, continuous delivery foundation well, so a little bit of context uh, the idea of this plugin is to enable distributed traces for every single bill that happens in jenkins so we support different type of jobs freestyle um, pipelines uh, though the more information you gather is will be always to the pipelines uh, so we, we just decided to focus more on the pipelines itself. And the point is for every single build, there will be a particular transaction. If uh, created as an APM distributed trace. Um, so this particular plugin is completely agnostic. It does support different vendors uh, because it uses open telemetry is becoming a more like a standard uh, from anything related with logs, metrics, and traces. Um, so that's the why we took the lead to use open telemetry to be completely vendor agnostic. So from the architecture point of view, you can plug to plug this plugin for any kind of backend. So the supported ones at the moment is any, but uh, you can customize as you wish. But 
let's say you can plug to Jaeger, Prometheus, Elasticsearch, and the visualization as well, you can find which one it could be in Grafana, it could be as well in uh, Kibana as well. So the idea is you install the plugin and then you start collecting data such as every distribute trace for every bill and metrics as well. Uh, logs will become short sooner than later. So a little bit more of context, uh, all the information we are gathering from the transaction point of view, like uh, from the bill point of view, is the name of the job, the type of the job, uh, whether it's a multi-branch type, how long that it took, any description, the bill number, you know, traditional data that normally is in the metadata of every bill. Uh, for the spans are normally related to, uh, if you do a git checkout in a pipeline uh, or you do a shell step. So every single built in step either provided by the core of Jenkins or, or any plugin uh, that you use, it's gonna be basically a report as a span uh, with all the details such as what is the plugin version, what is the name of the plugin that supports a particular step, the name of the step. Did you use any label such as for shell steps or batch or PowerShell? They will be they, they will be populated as well. Uh, anything related with the checkout of the source control, uh, such as the deep repo name of the branch, uh, the user, uh, these sort of things will be also uh, information as attributes. And there are other things such as metrics, uh, the number of builds, the number of failures, how big is the queue, how many uh, items has been left in the queue, the disk space, uh, related to the garbage collector and system CPU and so So it has been added recently. So a little bit more of context as well. Uh, the only thing that you need to do to install this plugin is basically either you use GCAX, sorry, GCAS, or using the UV interface, which basically just specify the entry point, uh, what is the credential that you need to use uh, from the UI point of view, which is the dashboard that you like to use. And a couple of examples, how it looks like uh, from the user interface. For every single build, there will be always a link. Uh, you can see in this particular pinky box uh, with the link. Uh, this is customized, so you have your own ad hoc. You won't see any reference to Elastic, as this is just an example. Uh, you can even customize this particular description. Um, then it will directly link to the distributed trace. So this is probably the most funny example of running a bill. Is just check out a source control uh, run Maven uh, for building and packaging. So what happens is the entire transaction, this is the name, it took 10 seconds. And then for every stage and every step, you will start seeing spans. So how long did it take to provision a machine? In this case, just less than a second, probably because it was a local machine. The time they took to check out the source code took one second. The time to build and package from scratch took four or five seconds. And then this purely are echo. Uh, this visualization is specific for Elastic. You have different one for Jaeger and Zipkin, uh, all of them because it's open telemetry based. But yeah, so everything related with the open telemetry plugin is here. Feel free to use and uh, ask any question. Uh, anything about what is the roadmap or what are the things that we are planning to do is also in the discussion on any issues, but in the project, you can see what are the different topics we are interested in to move further, which are the ones that we are postponing. So yeah, so it's public and you can access anyway. So a little bit more context um, about distributed traces, probably is more used for any application. Uh, so just to monitor uh, in real production environment, uh, every transaction or everything that interact with any microservices or third party services, people use these particular uh, distributed traces. So we thought we could apply the same for Jenkins, uh, more specifically to troubleshoot and analyze uh, how to analyze when something goes bad uh, in anything related with the CI ecosystem. So if I want to give you a demo, uh, we already have a couple of Jenkins instances. The one I would like to show you uh, probably is the one related to our production instance at the moment. 
So this is one of the instances that is public accessible anyway. It's anything related with the APM precisely in the Elastic organization. I'm going to log in. And then from there, I don't want to go deeper in details. I'm going to click a couple of folders to show you one of probably of the projects that I'm more interested to show you because it's a real live demo. Uh, please bear with me as well. So this is a multi-job project. Um, so this is the cell library we have, a, and it's called, again, public accessible. Uh, so in this case, uh, as I mentioned earlier, there is a link. The link is here, and we can click on that, and we can visualize the latest bill from the distributed tracing, how it looks like. So I'm going to open that one. Meanwhile, I'm going to go back to the previous tab, and I'm going to open uh, the bill, one of them, probably the previous one that I just finished. And I want to see how is the Blue Ocean view, and then you, you get more like one-to-one, -one, how it looks from the Blue Ocean, how it looks. Uh, and the distributed traces. So this is quite linear. It's just probably the most traditional step, like you check out source code, you do some linting, you do some tests and other things. But in theory, it's more like, what basically it's a Ruby Java project, like just sequence of running. Every, every, every from the blue sand, every, every step that you see here, is most likely a step in the pipeline that does something specifically. This is a print. This is validating if uh, the machine is a uh, Linux or, or not, then loading a file and blah, 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 right? So it's quite precisely, well, it's quite accurate what it does every single step. So in the UI from the Blue Ocean, we see this, how does it look like in the APM DCT traces? So this is one of the environments we have. Um, so in this case, um, this certain granularity because obviously the UI view here is more collapsed compared to this one, right? even though we can collapse. So we can just focus on the different stages and then we can move further. Probably it will be easier. So in this case, what we have here is just an entire view of a distributed trace, and this is a transaction. So this particular bill or job was executed so you can see here certain metadata, such as what's the name of the pipeline. I don't know, I'm gonna zoom a little bit more. Uh, was whether it's a multi-branch type uh, on other things, the time it took, uh, the URL. Blah, blah, blah. So this is the information regarding the transaction. Then for every single stage, we are gonna see the same. Right? We have the checkout, which is a default from the SCM sorry, from the declarative pipeline, the different specific one we have, a specific checkout, the check licenses. So you can see like this stage here are uh, the one, if I click back, the RPU. Okay. So those are spans. And if you go a little bit deeper, or let me go deeper, for instance, uh, the checkout happens uh, by default. We already have a sleep, but that's something specific for us anyway. Uh, but what is important here is from checkout, we can visualize further detail, right? Like, uh, what is the repository? Uh, what's the branch? Uh, what is the protocol that has been used? Uh, if it's an SSH or not. So these are the standard names, uh, sorry, attributes we are using. Others need to be standardized, and that's what I meant earlier. So every single step that happens in the pipeline is a span. And there are meta span, sorry, meta span as you check out the stages, which are meta spans. The similar for how long it took to provision a machine from this one is an ephemeral one, and it took almost two minutes since the request of the worker was asked by the pipeline. So this is the idea. So every single span you see here will give you a sense of what's going on, right? Uh, we don't see any failures in this case uh, because everything works out of the box. But then you can go deeper to any metadata or any logs regarding the bill or the machines that has been used. This is not yet integrated much, but in the future it will be. Um, other things that are important is how you can visualize metrics, how you can visualize what's going on in your CI. So there are a couple of 
uh, dashboards that give you a sense of the health of your system and all of them are based on distributed traces rather than metrics uh, at the moment all the metrics we gather from the plugin are not used much but probably uh, those are not the services i want to show i want to go back to the open telemetry and i went back to the dashboard so there are a couple of them uh, i want to click on the provisioner and i want to click on the cic order. So provisioner is about the build queue, how many machines has been provisioned, um, how long that it took, um, how much time you spent. So it's trying to, for every time you run a pipeline and there is a node request, you will see an entry queue and the time it took. And that's the idea. Gathering details from these particular transactions funds and show these details. So in this case, in the last 15 minutes, has been requested at once at this particular peak 11 workers. And then we can see the number of jobs that are queuing at the moment. So those are information I give you a sense of what's going on. If we move to the traditional dashboards that probably you made with other kind of tools. So we have a similar one uh, where we monitor the queue, we monitor the status of the jobs, how they look like. This is in the last 15 minutes. The number of workers that has been requested, the number of agents that are live at that particular time, uh, all the things that are more precisely about the pipeline, right? the number of steps, how often they are called, um, the time it takes, in duration is in nanoseconds or milliseconds. So, uh, what is the top 10 of jobs that has been executed, and the number of steps, steps that are triggered per minute uh, shorter. Um, if we have any failures, we will see here as well. Uh, failures such as there was now uh, traditional Java stack traces like the pipeline provider, for example, and there's a connection issue and so on. So, this is some of the dashboards that are already public as well in the GitHub group, so you can consume them as you wish. Um, so, there's a lot of room here to do. Uh, we are in the transition of using this in our production instances. Working with the community to, to, to help them to use this and gathering use cases or value scenarios that are important to solve. You know, a lot of things we have here. Uh, we are trying to prioritize this. But uh, yeah, mostly this is how it looks like at the moment. Um, I don't know if you have any more accurate question that you want me to answer, but in a brief summary, this is probably the demo I want to be. I don't listen to you for a moment. You have a sound issue, Olivier. I'm muted. I was muted. Sorry. Um, thanks, Victor, for the demo. That's really impressive. Um, what is interesting here is why monitoring Jenkins is pretty easy. I mean, you know if Jenkins is running or it is not. But really having information about how it behaves, um, if it can provision nodes, how long it takes to provision nodes, which, which protocol is used, and so on. That would be really interesting, especially in the on CI the Jenkins.io, because we regularly switch between um, cloud environment. We use different, I mean, we regularly test um, latest plugin and so on. So that would definitely benefit to the Jenkins um, community. And so I'm really excited to see this. So Another interesting, I think, um, area that we could work is to identify what are the different scenarios. Um, because I'm sure other people have other questions as well. And so if we can build generic dashboards that people can, can get inspired, that would be really nice um, to drive. So I think what we could try is to, let's say, focus, why, I mean, once a month, something like that to 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 report a little, a little bit the improvement we did here and the kind of question that we were able to answer, that would be really nice. Um, and also, thing um, I don't think you're using the plugin metrics, the metric plugin. Sorry, say again. So I don't think that you're relying on the met player plugin metric. No, 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 not at all. Um, so this particular information we are gathering is purely in the open telemetry spectrum. So all the all the information we are gathering and all the SDK we are using to create these distributed traces is purely open telemetry. So all the information I mentioned about the Java 
virtual machine, garbage collector, and so on. He's not using the metrics, but he's using the, the open telemetry that provides this under the hood coming on the fly. Um, but again, this is pretty much new. We just merged the PR a couple of days ago. Yeah, this is a really nice project, and I'm really excited to work on that. Um, yeah. So thanks, thanks, Victor, for your for that for that demo. Any question? Just join. No. <laughs> so lucky for you, for lucky for you, it was recorded. So. Yeah, uh, I missed something, but I have a few good news from the CDF uh, lens. So when you finish the main agenda, we can uh, discuss these topics at any time left. Okay. Um, so then I propose to quickly move on discourse. So I sent an email this morning to collect uh, feedback. So as I said, we deployed, so the, the company behind discourse offered uh, the project to sponsor uh, with the business here. So we have access to quite a lot of things. The service is available on community.jenkins.io. At the moment, it only works on invite only as we want to better understand the tool. So if you're interested to participate, feel free to reach out. Um, so for me, the main question, the, the, the main question that I, that I have to solve in the coming days is how we authenticate with that tool. Do we only rely on GitHub SSO? Um, the benefit that I have about using GitHub SSO is we don't rely on the third service and everybody who contributes to Jenkins already has a GitHub account. And the other question is, how do we also allow people to use their Jenkins account to connect on, on this course? Because it's also a, a possibility. Well, I commented in the mailing list, but actually my proposal would be to focus on the Linux Foundation SSO if possible, uh, because yeah, we definitely don't want to keep our old up uh, for long term, as we discussed in previous uh, meetings. So we want to have it, but uh, not for every Jenkins user and ones who use Jira, etc. but for people who dev need permissions to core systems. So for me, my preference would be to not use GitHub directly, but to use uh, Linux Foundation, because in this case, you get uh, also support for uh, Gmail, G Suite accounts and other things. Uh, not everyone who would be using this course would have a GitHub account. Uh, well, I think it's not a big deal to create that unless uh, you're based in a country where you cannot use a GitHub account. For example, if you're based in Crimea, in Iran, etc., where, well, Iran is no longer a concern, but um, yeah, overall having a foundation level account uh, would be nice. Yeah, that, that's a good point here that you mentioned Jenkins user and not Jenkins developers. Yeah. So again, it's preference. I have no idea about technical feasibility. Uh, and the guest Andrew Gutenberg uh, will eventually comment on that thread and say whether I'm completely nuts or not. Uh, but uh, yeah. Okay. So, so last time we had a discussion about using Linux Foundation um, authentication system. That was OK. Um, I'm not sure if we have access to the groups, but yeah, this some, those are technical implementation that we can that I have that I, that I have to see with Andrew. Yeah, but, yeah I guess our main point is that we do not really want to use uh, Jenkins LDAP for new systems and services we deploy, unless there is benefit in that. Okay, so we kind of have an agreement that we'll try to avoid the Jenkins accounts. Mm -hmm. um, thank you. And uh, the other, I mean, element that I would like to clarify is, when do we consider that the discourse instance is ready to be used broadly? What would be the, the acceptance criteria for this? I think uh, for that, uh, you need uh, uh, some uh, group of champions who would uh, drive uh, the adoption. And this group is already forming in the developer manifest, from what I can tell. OK. Uh, then, yeah, once uh, this thing's uh, the mute, once everything is smaller uh, evaluated, uh, there can be just a proposal uh, to the uh, Jenkins uh, governance manager, well, developer manager, that let's make it official. And then we just apply common process if everyone, if there is a consensus, if we vote for that, OK, it's official. I wouldn't okay. really uh, want to invent a wheel there. 
So it might be Jeff, etc. if you want to write a specification for that. Uh, but yeah, I think the main point for us is to just uh, evaluate the system and to see whether it fits our needs. Sounds we have an agreement there. Um, that's perfect. Um, so we cover all the points that I have regarding this course. So I propose to move to the next topic that Oleg want to bring here, CDF news. Oh, okay. Uh, so yeah, one of the CDF news that uh, today I brought up a question about um, um, transferring KWS account. So okay. generally there is no concern from the technical oversight community from tracing. Tracy is supportive about that. Tracy took an internet to actually explore what would it take. Because we know that Spinnaker already has an AWS account, but if we merge Spinnaker account and Jenkins account, we will be in the same situation like Colby's and Jenkins account in principle, in terms of billing. So we need to figure it out. And well, Tracy will help us with it. Uh, there was no opposition. And uh, yep. Uh, I will be able to drive it on the CDF QC. It's kind of yet to be announced, but uh, I will be joining the technical oversight committee because there we are only four nominations for four seats, so, so there will be no elections. Um, this year, so the, yeah, effective July 1st, I will be CDF talk member, basically replacing uh, Kiki in this role. Which sounds really good news. Mm -hmm. So what else? Uh, yeah, nothing else uh, related to CDF at the moment. So, so we don't we don't have we don't have any estimated time for the AWS accounts, right? Uh, yeah, no estimated time, and uh, yeah, we agree on all sides. So what is currently happening uh, is what I sent to the information list. We are splitting the cloud this account uh, so that uh, there would be an independent Jenkins account to which you will connect all sponsorships. So this account will be ready for transition. We'll be technically able to add more contributors at this stage. Um, I believe so, uh, but it won't be owned by CDF. So there will be somebody who is formerly the owner, maybe it will be still Cloud Bees, maybe it will be some of individual contributors uh, if they are interested uh, to put their credit card on that. I'm not. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's yet to be decided. But we are doing the initial transition stages, and in parallel, we initiated the discussion with the CDF. But uh, yeah, let's set expectation. If we get it uh, done by autumn, it will be already an achievement. Uh, so we don't expect it to happen overnight. Yeah, that I mean that's really great because then that means that we would be able to invite um to that account and then include these employees, which is really nice. Mm -hmm. So, so thanks, for Alec, that for... uh, we should be uh, able to unblock uh, once uh, the cloud based migration uh, will complete. And thanks to Ben Walding, thanks to uh, Ray Sullivan and other uh, cloud based employees, uh, this uh, is being processed quite quickly. So yeah, there is spring planning and other things uh, apply, but yeah, generally it should be done soon. That's awesome. We are running over time for this meeting. So um, do you have any other topic that you want to bring here? So, so yeah, then thank you for your time and I'll see you later on RSC. Goodbye. No. And thanks, Victor and Ivan. Thanks, everyone.